So in this audio, I will begin with colorectal cancer. Colorectal cancer, that refers to cancer in the colon and the rectum. The colon and the rectum are um, part of our large intestine. Now, cancer of the colon or the rectum, it's a major health problem. And um, most of the time, Cancer, colon cancer can be highly curable. Um, most of the colorectal cancers are from adenocarcinomas. Um, colorectal cancer, it can metastasize by direct extension or by spreading um, through the blood or the lymph. So the liver is the most common site for metastasis. Seeding um, can occur as well. Seeding is when cancer cells break off from the tumor um, and then they fall into the cavity. Complications related to colorectal cancer um, numerous from peritonitis to um, fistula formation to the urinary bladder um, or the vagina. Um, obstruction of intestines can occur. Now, typically, um, those older than 50 years of age or have a family history of cancer should be um, getting screenings pretty often. Uh, starting at 50 years of age, the recommended um, screening is to have a colonoscopy every 10 years um, or a double contrast barium enema every five years, okay? So those that are at risk for developing colorectal cancer are if they're over age 50, if there's a family history, um, or if they have any type of disease such as Crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis, um, or uh, an H. pylori infection or HPV infection. There's also evidence that supports that smoking, obesity, physical inactivity, and alcohol consumption, as well as red meats, um, increase the chances that the patient will have colorectal cancer. Colorectal cancer is more prevalent in African Americans, and African Americans have a lower survival rate than Caucasians. Um, typically, gene mutations are present um, diagnostic screening is very important for these individuals. Like I said, typically those that are of 50 years of age and older, uh, they are required to have a colonoscopy every 10 years. Um, but the colonoscopy should be done earlier than every 10 years or sooner than every 10 years and sometimes sooner than age 50 if the patient has a familial history, if the patient has ever had any type of polyps, um, or any comorbid diseases, okay, or um, anything, any diseases that would predispose the patient to cancer. Now, it's important to um, teach these patients that the earlier the screening, the better, okay? We want to teach these patients to decrease their fat intake, their refined carbohydrates intake, and um, to not eat as many low fiber foods. It's good to eat in increased amounts of vegetables like broccoli, cabbage, cauliflower. Um, all of these foods help to protect the intestine. Okay, they help to protect the intestines. Now, whenever we're taking in a, a history on these patients, so we know that there are certain things that predispose a patient to colorectal cancer. So we wanna make sure we're getting a detailed personal history. We wanna make sure that the patient themselves does not already have cancer. We want to know about ulcerative colitis. We want to know about any polyps, um, any familial history. We want to know about Crohn's disease. We want to know if these patients are using tobacco, tobacco or alcohol and if it's in moderation, how much it is. We also want to know if these patients are having any type of um, change in their stool with or without blood. Common signs of colorectal cancer or common manif manifestations are rectal bleeding, anemia, and a change in the stool's uh, consistency or shape. Now, 
it's important to remember that these growing tumors can cause obstructions in the bowel, okay? Obstructions can cause gas pains, cramping, and the patient is not able to um, fully eliminate uh, their bowels, okay? Now, rectosigmoid colon um, tumors, those are associated with the passage of red blood through the rectum, okay? Um, as well as narrowing stools and um, having to strain to pass the stool. Now, tumors, they can disrupt bowel patterns or appearance because the stool consistency is more liquid, um, especially with the right-sided tumors because the stool consistency is more liquid on that ascending tract. Um, the type of tumors on the right side, they typically bleed a dark colored blood and the patient can often suffer from anemia from uh, blood loss. Now, we do want to make sure we're assessing the abdomen for any distension or masses, okay? We want to know if we can see any of those peristaltic waves. Um, we're looking for anything that uh, would accompany those peristaltic waves such as a high-pitched sound and that can indicate um, obstruction. Now for these patients that are diagnosed with colorectal cancer they are having um, a very difficult time psychosocially okay uh, the patient probably has concerns about pain um, they're concerned with cancer being a death sentence and they're concerned with any possible body changes that may result. Now, as far as um, these patients and them knowing that cancer is genetic, they can also suffer anxiety because they are afraid uh, for their family members, okay? Laboratory assessments, um, hemoglobin and hematocrit typically are decreased because most of the times we have bleeding. Fecal occult blood tests um, can be uh, done and those indicate bleeding in our gastrointestinal tract. Now we want to remember that certain vitamins and drugs, um, you know, aspirin, vitamin C, any type of red meat should be avoided for at least 48 hours before providing a stool specimen, okay? Now, just because we do receive a negative result does not rule out the possibility of colorectal cancer. Um, an oncogene, an oncofetal antigen, CEA, or carcinoembryonic antigen, um, typically that's going to be elevated in patients or individuals that have colorectal cancer. The normal value is typically less than 5, okay? Imaging assessments, we can see barium enemas, colonoscopies, um, CT and MRIs, those help us determine the existence of the mass and um, if there's been any metastasize, uh, metastasization of the tumor. Um, colonoscopies are the most definitive test for the diagnosis of colorectal cancer. It's important to remember that these patients um, whenever we're thinking of nursing diagnoses and trying to collaborate to be able to implement interventions, um, we want to make sure that we are offering them emotional support and grievance as well as uh, educating them on the potential for um, the tumor metastasizing, okay? Now, the cancer can spread to vital organs. Um, but the patient with colorectal cancer is expected not to have this happen, okay? And if that doesn't happen, then the patient's life expectancy will be increased. In the next audio, I will begin with um, non-surgical management for colorectal cancer.